Webster's. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapney. I just wanted to answer a, uh, a question. Uh, Chris wanted to know, um, uh, you're always talking about the historic, you have historical references and milestones and social trends, the guideposts to the market, etc. cetera. Uh, and he goes on and then wants you to know about, he had ordered the book called The Psychology of Investing, something where I have a chapter in going way back to the late 1990s. It was published by the Harvard Medical uh, Harvard Medical Department because it was part of the psychology, a very big conference they had here in Boston. He had all these famous people talking. I was just lucky to be able to be invited. Um, but I had um, the, an article which uh, chapter, uh, it was, uh, so, you know, that, Hmm. You know, Dave White used to talk about this a lot. Our dear friend Dave White, our late Dave White. And he spoke about a, a book called Extraordinary Popular Delusions and the Madness of Crowds. Um, this was actually first published a little while ago, just a couple of months ago, in 1841. Nothing changes. Human psychology never changes. But there are other books. And I... Um, I would do this, Chris. I would use your own personal references. I can see the couple of things that you've also noted. And just say to yourself, I call this a period of excessivity. I'd call the period of the 1990s as we were going into that major top in 2000 period of great excessivity. And that's all you have to do. You know, the pendulum swings from sparsity to excessivity. And we, I was talking to someone the other day, we were talking about, there, there are studies now that are saying that young people, you can go up to almost 40 or 60, depends what paper you read, medical paper that is. Maybe 60% of young people feel tremendous pressure. And I always say, it's a crazy, just to think about that, when this is the most, most spoiled period in the history of mankind for all of us, I mean, just think, I always think of Mozart. You know, Mozart had to, he wrote a th over a thousand pieces. He had to write them with uh, family and kids running around, all sorts of things. He had to write them with ink. He had to put the ink into an inkwell. It used to always bump and spill. Uh, he had to draw the lines for the staves, the, mark, the staves for all the pieces, or they could have get them. Maybe he got them, maybe he didn't, always didn't have enough money. Um, he woke up in the morning, he had his co commissions to finish, and it's freezing cold. There's no heat that you can speak of. Um, there's no, he, where's the bathroom? It just everything today is just, the young people have it at their fingertips. They have everything. So, But if you, always, if you had to measure um, the tenseness that people have, Tenseness is tenseness. So if you tense to a degree, eight, 8 out of 10, does it matter that it's 8 out of 10 in Mozart's time and it's 8 out of 10 today? But someone looking from the outside can say, wow, you've got everything else. It's just really this, I mean, you know, all I'm saying is that this period of excessivity, you want water? No, there's no water. You can't find plain anything. You've got to have this water or carbonated or colored or texture, whatever it is. I mean, every single thing, there's a variety. Every single day you go to the supermarket, there's there are new products. So use just, you don't have to read books. You can get a sense that at a certain point, this this era of excessivity, we're, we're getting into it. I don't know if we can go maybe another year and then there should be a really, a really good, uh, I don't use the word cleansing because it has all these other connot social connotations, but there's a real whittling down of all the excessivity. You know, people here in the Boston area, they don't know uh, that there was a period when I was looking at houses where if I made an appointment to see someone, although I usually did it by myself without any uh, real estate agent, 
they would look at me and say, thank God you've come. I haven't seen anybody for 16 months or 18 months. And the prices have gone, been cut almost in half. Around here, the people wouldn't believe it, but their houses were cut in half. And the last recession, maybe Newton, Massachusetts, maybe went down 10%, 15%, maybe some houses were less. But most of the houses were <laughs> really close to the asking price. So all I can say is, Chris, I'll go to it and I'm going to go through a bunch of things over a period of time. There's no rush for that part of it. But I'll talk about what I see as excessivity. All right, let's get back to the market here. The TLT, very important. It made the, the, just the chance of a Chapman Wave uh, volume price climax low on the 3rd of May when it hit 94.54 after having, look at this, it's tootling along. It, it was pulling back in the dreaded H pattern. That's in the Chapman Wave, the arch formation. Uh, back on the 31st of July, the low was 99.62. The next day, the high is 90, uh, 98, 92 was the high in the previous day. The low was 99.62. The next day, the low of that day of the 1st of August was 98.4, uh, was 97.90. The next day, the high is 97.24. Again, the following day, there's a huge gap down. And that's where you saw a huge, not an explosion in price, but a big volume increase. I like an explosion. I want to see the volume is, I mean, maybe double the average, but at least 30 to 40 or 50 percent even above the biggest volume uh, spike that it had in over a year or two. So this is kind of not in that category. That's number one. Number two is, we're talking about interest rates. There are a whole bunch of th factors that go into the interest rate. So it isn't like a stock. It isn't like the KRE. The, uh, this is the uh, KRE is the S&P Regional Bank Banking ETF, which had that massive move to the downside, also with a big red candles and then a huge gap to the downside and a nice price reversal the following session. Um, and that was the 34.52 low of the 4th of May, or there are others as well. I'm just going through the ones that I talk about here very often. Or Schwab's 45 round number low and then retested at 45.65 quite a few weeks later, about a month later. <clears throat> and then it had a move all the way. Even now it's trading well. It's up at 65.55. So that's different. So I'm just saying that, yeah, it's important. We're going to monitor the TLT. I just think that yields... TNX.X, the 10 year yield, which is uh, where uh, rates for automobile loans and all sorts of things like that, uh, credit card loans, those that's about, it's trading at 4.009 or 40.09%. Uh, it's made a peak D in Chapman. We've always been looking at D's and E's. How far can you drop? Well, you drop quite far. And now it's trying to find a home. I just think it's stuck in a range for now. In the upper range, but still stuck in a range. All right, now let's get to the nitty gritties. Um, a couple of questions came in. I'm, I'm going to do this real quickly, so let me go. Here we go. Dow is now 440 points higher uh, at 35,565. 35,679 was the high. It was the day that we actually shorted it. We've got a pretty tight stop in that. It wasn't an aggressive short at all. So we're going to be watching that. S&P right now is up. It's gone a little higher, but it's up 55 at 45.22. I'll be back then. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So, uh, and, and just uh, by the way, Chris, I, I'll make a note of some of the books that I, I've written down somewhere. I just can't find it right now that David has spoken about that where he's kind of the books, his go to books in terms of uh, the market fear factor um, and the sheep part of it. Um, all right, so the dollar's now down 41 ticks. But look at this EUR USD made this peak top. Uh, peak D right here with the doji can around about the 17th of uh, July. Pull back sharply. It's attempting to make a U turn right here, but if you look at the weekly, that nine is still over the 14. So I just wanted to speak to this issue for a moment because it's been so pertinent to everything I've discussed for the, about the past month. When you go to, uh, maybe I'll just go here and I'll show you something very, very interesting. Look. Uh, let's see, this is this SMH, as you can see right there, just turned pink. And it's made a beautiful one-to-one. -one. This is a price, uh, the, the low should have been there, but I use, I like to go a little conservative, uh, a little, like, kind of do it in a conservative way initially, and then I can be a little more aggressive. So um, it's done that one-to-one -to, -one to the, the left side, right side with the price time match. I call that bar symmetry with the plumb line in the middle. It's not quite the middle here. But I want you to show you something very interesting. Look. Here's the Dow. I always, I, I say to myself, don't mess the chart up. It told you such a good story before. Um, you know what I'll do. I'm going to do this. I'm going to say click, uh, copy, paste, and then do I have it? No, I don't. <laughs> of course, I don't have it. I want you to put in, I used to have it. Maybe it's in here. Drawing objects. Oh, there it is. So uh, remove. Ah, oh, there are. Remove. There we go. Remove drawing objects. I'm just going to put everything that I can see that's written in. Of course, if I could read it, it would be very good. Arrows up, arrows down. Wait, what's going on here? Um, select all. Ah, I'll just select all. And then we'll go OK. There. Yeah. OK. So now what you can see is this green line, the nine period moving average. Um, that is solidly green. Look at the, um, I wanted to show a particular chart, and that was the chart of Apple. 
Yes. So the chart of Apple, look, just a brief moment back in uh, March or so of this year, but from the, the low that was made January, the week of January the 6th. No, it's not. It's the next one. It's right there. From January the 17th, except for those two days, this is the first time you've got the pink nine-period exponential moving average. Isn't that quite something? Uh, look at the IYT, which is the transportation index. This is the first time that you've gone pink. And that's the reason why I feel very strongly that over a period, this nine-period moving average can hang in. Even here, look at this. Here's the top in the IYT back on the 2nd of February at 247.86. It took 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 sessions before it went pink. And here we are. We're at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is eight sessions. Today's the ninth session. So I am I have a great deal of respect because it tells me about, I call it the, the technical tool of last resort. Just like I always say, the um, Federal Reserve is the bank of last resort. Well, in this particular instance, I've been waiting and waiting. And you can see that these bounces, look, even here, you've got a little green candle in the SMHs. But the MACD's weak, stochastics very weak, on balance volumes very weak. It just says to me that the upside right now is extremely limited in certain sectors. Look, yes, NVIDIA. This is from, look at this, from... The 12th of January of 2023, this year, 12th of January, this is the first time it's gone pink in the nine period moving average. And you can see what's the target, probably this left side low of the 26th of January of 401, around number 40100, and we're at 430. So it could take a little bit of time, but that would probably be a decent retracement. <laughs> it's just a couple of weeks retracement of this huge move. It hasn't even gone to the gap. So this is really important. There's something very different about a chart like GE. Uh, come on, GE. Let's have you. Oops, coming up. Uh, or click. There it is. Look, GE is still, even today, it's up nicely, up 2.56. Walking the nine period moving average ever since. <clears throat> Ever since Jan, uh, this was December, wasn't it? Uh, let's go to yeah, December the 29th. Uh, December 30, it goes it goes green, and it stayed green from this level right here of 64, and here it is, almost double at 114. It's been almost double already. It's been to 170, not double, but it's a pretty decent move. Okay, so you've got to me. I have respect. That's all I'm saying. So I wanted to show you that. Now I want to go to all the questions that I have. Um, the questions that I have, some of them are pretty much the same that we always get. GDX, what I think. I just don't think GDX is ready yet. Look, it just cannot get. Look how the distance is between the pink 9 period moving average and the 14. Look how far away it is from the 200 period moving average. Look at the daily MACD, how weak it is. Look at the stochastic tries to rally. The GDX gold miners couldn't even rally much. And it's still at 11%. On balance volume scoop, this is the gray line right here. That's relative strength. It's, still, it's steady, but it's weak in the 44 area. Um, and the GDX weekly chart did this dreaded H. If it closes for two weeks underneath the low of 2876, the week of the 10th, uh, week of the 30th of June, and now I've got to start looking at this whole area here to the 26s, uh, 2650 as support, 2660 actually. So all I'm saying is I don't think it's ready. I also don't think that the dollar right now is ready for prime time. It is just a decent rally going back to where it was a few weeks ago. And that tells me that the USD JPY, which has made a new recovery high in leg E, is, and we've been talking about this for a while. I've been saying, I believe that the yen, US dollar, Japanese yen currency pair, should go to 143.8. 07, 143.069 was the high of the week of the 30th of June. It should make a leg D. So, so far, this is a leg E in the daily chart. There are. And that just tells me 
that all the conditions that we were looking at even just a few days ago are still kind of in place and that this market is in general if you look at the slx i someone in the den said uh yakarina s1 said the yakarino on cb cb cnbc he's the ex u.s steel ceo well look we discussed this the other day uh the uh steel sector vanek vector steel etf made a high in the 70 uh, was that 71 10 or something 7142 on the 25th of july and here it is at 65 66 not a big deal but here's this look at the match from the the vertical test right here we're going to find my vertical line the test from way back in march the weekly chart to the high that was made three weeks ago the MACD is much weaker and the stochastic was over 80%. It's holding well, but the technicals aren't quite strong. I'll be right back. That was a 401. Tigers. Candlestick pattern analysis is a primary tool among successful traders, and you should be no different. Candlestick patterns can demystify buy points, sell points, general price movement, and so much more. At 4 p.m. on Monday, August 14th, trader Teddy Kekstadt will be hosting a live, hour-long webinar on Japanese candlestick patterns. Teddy, the author of the Tiger Forex Report, has been trading for 33 years, and candlestick patterns have been instrumental to his success. For just $97, see how to use candlestick patterns to analyze stocks and options in order to capitalize on market swings, increase your odds of success, and decrease your risk. During this live webinar, you will learn when to use and when not to use Japanese candlestick patterns in this volatile market. Dispel the myths about this strategy and see just how much the mastery of candlestick pattern recognition can impact your trading. Visit TFNN.com today. TFNN. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument you have to practice sure but you also need excellent instruction from experts at TFNN you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis and it's not just dry tedious text either TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com to hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com to hit Watch Tiger TV. So looking at the core cyclical stocks, the ones that really are the ones, they, they pertain to the deepness of the economy, like uh, DuPont. Uh, DD trading right now. So this is RTX. Uh, now they have two. There's RTX, which uh, I think well, didn't uh, Raytheon take over uh, DuPont? I'm not sure about that. I should know that very well. I'm watching it all the time. Um, so uh, Raytheon just gapped down and had a real problem. So there's the whole defense area. Maybe that's a good sign to see the defense area tanking like this. DuPont's held up well. 
uh, near the highs, near to the recovery highs. Caterpillar made all-time highs just about a week or so ago at that peak E top at about 293 in the 293 area. Let me just give you the exact price. 293.88. Uh, it's holding well. It's at 286 right now. And PAVE, which is the infrastructure, global X, U.S. infrastructure development ETF, uh, is trading really well. It is up 23 cents. I made an all-time high also about uh, six sessions ago in the 32s, trading right now 32.36. Um, you've got to ask the question, how come? How could this, in this, you know, bearish news, you just, I'm sure all of you get emails all the time saying, banks, uh, thank God, you've got, you know, it just, uh, they've held up, but they're about to crash and all this stuff. But you just got to go one step at a time, and this pertains to Chris's thing about the the, the, the market fear. Um, that's kind of news driven. But if you look at the uh, you look at the deep cyclicals doing so well, not the steel stocks so well. They did okay, but they've been stalling lately. This is quite amazing. And look at this HGX. We just got stopped out of. We did this as uh, an attempt to pick a top. In the HGX, but it was actually one of the one of the stocks. Toll Brothers, we got stopped out. It's very small losses, but it was an attempt to get to pick, or like I did with the, the Dow, to attempt to pick the exact moment of the high. So at least you got a bit of a cushion uh, instead of trying to get it as it's coming down, because then you could get really big bounces. Then what do you do? But in this particular instance, what we're looking at is look how beautifully. The whole housing sector, and it's got a peak C, there's no other way I can count that right now, and it should have one quick pop above the high of 580.63, which was the all-time high made just three weeks ago, and you should see a D, and then it should start again to go sideways. So I think that the, side, the upside now with certain sectors and certain stocks is kind of limited. I'm going to put in that particular category stocks in the um, in the SMH, like in NVIDIA. I think now the upside is very limited. You're going to get some big spikes, but my, my guess is that it's in a digestive phase, a very important digestive phase. I don't want to go through them all at once. Micro, etc. cetera, uh, trying to balance. Um, it's just not it's sideways, not doing all that well. And you've got others. I want to see Intel. Question came up. Could Intel now take over from where uh, NVIDIA was just in terms of rallying, not to the, uh, as a company? At 34.98, up 70 cents. No, I think it's... It's always had problems. It should remain a problematic issue. But here's the issue that I'm really looking at, and that is um, when you're going to hack, which is the global prime cyber security ETF and security. Um, I had renotated this the other day. I'll have to do it again. I'll do it right now, all of us together. There's your peak D. Whoops, peak D, leg D. Now it could be a peak D by tomorrow's close uh, in the weekly chart. Leg C in the monthly, and you've had a beautiful peak A in the daily. Here we go. It's just as simple as that. You identify the low bar, then you count each successively higher peak. If it goes higher by one penny, it starts a new leg up. It makes a peak. It becomes a peak, whatever letter it is. That's a B. That's a C. That's a, oh, I don't think it made it. I think it missed it by a penny. So you've got uh, 50, 52 11 on the 19th of July, 52.11, and you've got 52.11 on the 27th. So that remains a C. By one penny, it would have gone to a D. Now it gets your D, a D, and now we're having, this is a cell signal to cell mode because it closed so sharply under the uh, the line went negative. So that could have a bounce, could even take that out, but that's the designation right now. So you've got the cybersecurity stocks where individual ones did really well, but as a group, they've been really a lackluster. Um, I'm kind of surprised. I would have thought that the prime service security ETF would have been way higher. Um, everybody needs the security. I don't quite understand that. I wanted to go to Bitcoin just for a moment. I had a question. Where do I think Bitcoin's going? I think it's stuck for now. But I think if it gets down to the 28 to 27 level, that's where I'm going to see whether or not it is time to put some money to work there. So this is a huge bounce in the market. Mm. 
Is this a bounce that, like every other day that we've seen this, this week, it just gives back the gains and even goes negative, very negative by the close? I think there's enough buying here to hold us just a little bit longer, and then we'll see what happens maybe uh, throughout the day, and then we close very nicely um, from the lows of yesterday, but off the highs, and then we'll have to deal with tomorrow. But I, yes, there are some sectors that are. Let me just look at the QCOM. So the question is, when when would you buy? When would you add to QCOM? Uh, Qualcomm, that is. So Qualcomm trading at 118, up a dollar 43. Oh, I forgot what the exact question is. God, I think it was add to it. I, I not was it either to enter or to add to it. I don't like gaps like this that don't get filled very quickly. And it hasn't even got. It did get close for the next two bars, but then it gave it back. I would just say the weekly chart is suggesting it's stuck in a range. So Qualcomm, I personally, I would just hold off. I don't see anything big in Qualcomm just yet. Maybe in about three weeks' time, that's different. Next question came in. Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Did that? Did that? Did that? Did that? Um, oh, S O U N. Uh, this is uh, Sound Soundhound AI Inc. A shares connects any voice enabled products. I, I think that that's what I got. I don't know if that's really what it does. Trading down, it said 198 is down seven cents. I'd be really careful of these single digit stocks that are really failing to participate at all and just making lower lows. This could go broke. So just I, I'm in the category right now that you want to be very selective with your money. You can take two, three percent, even four percent losses, especially if you know that you you, you have the capacity to to make ten or twelve percent quite quickly to get that money back. But this is different altogether. You can get in at one ninety eight. They could announce anything, and it could be at ninety eight. You've lost a dollar. That's I mean that's a big chunk, fifty percent of your money. So yes, I think we're starting on the way down. I just wanted to show you the e mini chart again. Um, sideways. Sideways making lower lows and lower highs. Remember, I've kept this line in. People said, how can you keep a line in? What, what, what does it mean? So this goes back weeks. I don't even remember where it is. I could go back and find it. I'm not prepared to do that. I have this horizontal line. I said, going out a couple of weeks, I would not be surprised if this particular horizontal line of 42.30 is going to be hit Above and below, it's going to be like a magnet, like a fulcrum as the price goes up and down, up and down. Where are we now? Five. Six. Up back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, I was asked about UNG yesterday. Look at this uh, uh, slide, 37 cents down at 760. But what's really important is uh, I said how it holds the 760 to 730. I thought I said 20. Yes, over the next week I said it's going to hold 740 to 720. It's trading at 759 right now. Actually, this island reversal is not something that you should panic about in the sense that anything that trades overseas before us is always, not always, but mostly has gaps. You can see it. What will be extremely important is if speed, you remember I said speed is of the essence right now, especially in the weekly chart. I would put it to Tuesday, maybe Wednesday of next week. There has to be a test of the 830 uh, to 840 area. Whoa, that's a long way to go from here now. Um, but that's the way it has for this to work really well. And you remember what I, the, the, the thing that we don't know because winter, the buying for natural gas comes a little later on. It starts, I believe, the end of August, the beginning of September. I might be wrong, but that's where the the influx already comes in. So uh, what happens now is kind of subsidiary to that. But I'm just saying that if we start to see a trade above that candle, that was the candle of uh, the 30th of June, 783. It needs to get above 783. And it needs to do that on a closing basis in the weekly chart. That's the only way I can see in the shorter term for it to start to build a base in this bull formation in the weekly chart so that I can say I'm now really comfortable to say natural gas has formed some kind of a low that is, um, I can't call it a tradable low. I can only say a low of consequence because if it takes out 720 or $7, it's just back in this range and it says no matter what happens, natural gas just doesn't want to hold the gain. So, okay, I thought I'd just touch on that because there were questions about it yesterday, no, nobody today, but I am going to, I wanted to follow up because this is a way steeper move. My thinking was that the left side high of, um, this is the UNG, the left side high, United States Natural Gas Fund of the 26th of June at 7.83, it should test it at some point. Well, today's high is 7.77 and the low is 7.57. That's, that's steeper and quicker than I would have wanted to see. So that says to me, now you've got to be a little careful. But looking intermediate term, we are starting to see higher highs and higher lows. That's really very, very important. Uh, now I wanted to go back to this chart right here. I should have actually finished off while I was talking. That 4528, 4530 level um, of the um, that, that horizontal line. Got taken out. I meant to talk about this much earlier. In whenever there's a news event, this is the one time that you, even if you have everything in order, 
you could see a failure. I call it the peak A failure. It's the Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down. This is after the 8.30 or 9 o'clock news that comes out. Well, we've just seen that. Look at that huge turn down. That's the reason why I didn't. I said to subscribers, that, that level that we got into in the Dow for the short side was right just about at the top because of the instrument we used within. It was really close to the top. That just gives us a cushion, and you need to have it because, look, especially when you've got the 914 so strong. Uh, let me just go to it right now. Especially when you've got this 914 so strong, uh, to get it, the nine to flip to the negative side, it takes a lot, and you've got to be prepared for big bounces. So if now we start to make higher, well, lower lows and lower highs with a close below, I would just say a close below 35,000 says, bingo. Now we start to see you can't have the general lead without the troops, and that's what the, what the Dow was doing. Now... Either the, either the troops start to come back in line and con continue higher with the Dow or the general, or in this case, the general has to say, all right, guys, we'll take a break, and I'm coming to join you. And that's the way we're going to be watching it. The day's young. Uh, we've seen this kind of whipsawing, a couple of hundred points here and there in the, in the Dow, up and down. But what I am going to do right now is to tell you that giving back um, 8.30 we were trading right there. This is, is this the 8.30 or the 8.29? No, this is 8.40. 8.30, ah, oh, there you are. 8.30, we're right. So we're, this is the candle for 8.30. So this candle of 45.08, I'm once we close on a 10-minute basis under 45.08, if we're going to do that in this particular phase right now, that just says, uh-oh, this is telling us that there's distribution. And distribution says that when something's going sideways at a high, oh, I should have shown you the chart that we just had. Something's going sideways at a high, like it was here in this kind of rectangle formation right here. You've got to be careful because when it takes out that base, you can, the base of support of the rectangle, you can go one to one to the downside or more. And that's what we've kind of done. Now this 4530 is like a magnet. It wants to try to get back there. It was so quick to pull back. It wants to say goodbye to its friends, and it has to. We'll see if it's able to do that. So, within that context, where are we? What are we looking at? We're looking at something that says some of those AI stocks. Let me just look at. Let me go back here. Um, actually, I've got a ton of stocks to look at. Let me get to them right now. AI is the um, C3 dot AI Inc. Uh, it's made this arch formation went to quick PK B C D E F G. It's amazing how many. Times it made slightly higher highs. Now it's arching over and at 33.49. My my eye says that there's a good chance that 31.57, the low of the 27th, will be hit, even if there are a couple of bounces. It's a peak D in the weekly chart with the dreaded H forming right now. Another question came in. Let me just do this real quickly. Uh, these are the questions that came in. Oh, I got one that I didn't see. Let me just think. Was that for me? Uh, RKT. RKT, that was rocket something. Um, yeah, rocket went to a high, high. It's in leg E. We were doing this the other day, and I said, yeah, this is good. I've got it as a flat base restart potential. I don't know. And that says it's 11.57. It doesn't give you time. This particular technique doesn't give you time. It's called the Chapman Wave flat base restart. And I said I'd do a little bit of work to see if it's not an instant uh, Chapman Wave instant unconventional flat base restart um i everything about it says it it's got that look and i did this before i'll have to do it again so here we go pete a i'll just tell you what this is oh i had all written down and everything but i did lose some of my data a little upsetting it's in leg d in the weekly chart monthly chart is in leg b doesn't look great once upon a time it was up in the 40 range then it went down to the fives and now it's trading at uh uh, 1166 up 18 cents had a really good move. So this is what I'd be looking at, but I need to do a little bit of work. And I'm going to say my my premise right now is that it's creating an extended arch. It can go out for a while, and I would say by the end of August, maybe the beginning of September, there's one swoosh to the downside that tests 10, and that's going to be the big thing. Does it then start a brand new move? Yeah. 
So there's a difference, huh? Yeah, so the National Gas Contract, I actually, everything I said about UNG applies to the uh, Natural Gas Contract. I'll be back. Dow's up to 60. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Tomorrow's Technical Friday. I'll do a little bit more of this here. But look, yes, this left side, right side price time match, this bar symmetry. On the left side to the right, just a bear chart. Think of what it's got, candlestick. It doesn't have to be at this particular point. So here we go. We go to the right and look what happens. Bam, right there. So this is green and that is red. It doesn't have to be exact, but it gives you a sense. And it gives you a sense of, look, it's a W formation. U shape one on the left, U shape on the right. That's the big one. But it also says... Rectangle formation, and it's it's climbing this wall. Pick A. This is a 30-minute chart. A. Then under it's got A, B, C, D, E, F. I might have missed one, but that's what I've got right now. Now you're getting your big uh, big pullback. So it says to me, look at this. There's a midpoint in this big kind of like rectangle formation, and that just says that if this and it kind of coincides with that 4508 level I was talking about a moment ago. And it just says that that makes this whole area here with prices like a fulcrum, like moving up and then coming back to the midpoint and then coming down. And it just says at any point, if you start to go under 4508, but I actually think 
that there's enough residual strength just in terms of saying we've been down so severely in some areas for a couple of days and yet the market kept trying to come back and then failed. This is the day that you might reverse that whole thing and I still see, I missed one, okay, it's a G. Thank you, uh, Dan the Dan. Um, so within that context, what I'm saying is that there's enough, let me just do this real quickly, here we go. Here's the Dow. The Dow is holding the ninth period exponential moving average just beautifully. Um, it hasn't crossed negative with this group up to date. It's even expanded. I think it's a process and that by next week, we'll be see if we start to take out 35,000 in the Dow, you'll see that ninth period moving average start to go negative. And then the Dow joins the, uh, the troops. The right now, the troops are trying to uh, join the Dow. So just a mixed session with, with more positive action. Then check out both people, they use Andrew. Thank you for